All right, guys, welcome back to another episode of the Dave Gold Evolve podcast. Today, my guest is Sergio Cantori. Um, I actually don't know a lot about Sergio, besides the fact that he's got a really cool Italian accent, and he's teaching men a healthy and holistic approach to dating. So welcome, Sergio, and maybe you can tell the audience a little bit about where you are in the world right now and what you do. Mm -hmm. Thank you, David, for having me here. Hi, everybody. A pleasure to be hosting this podcast. Now, uh, well, I'm Italian, as David anticipated to you, and I live in Rimini, which is a city in the northeastern part of Italy, uh, right by the beach. It's quite of an interesting location to be, born, to be living in for dating, um, because this is basically one of the homelands of game, <laughs> yeah, of seduction in Italy. Back in the 1980s, uh, there were a lot of men were basically doing seduction as a, as a game, basically as a sport. And it was like <laughs> the gold times, that's how they called them. Some of them were even famous. Like one of these guys died recently. His name was uh, Danza, his code name. And he died after having slept with 6,000 girls, something like this. And these guys were like a legend here, all right? And then we lost this thing, basically. And it's quite interesting also, because even if I lived in this city for most of my life, uh, I was actually very, very bad with women until a few years ago when I decided to learn how to do that. Was that frustrating for you growing up, was that, not being good with women in a city uh -huh. where there were a lot of guys having success? That was definitely frustrating, definitely frustrating. Um, my, my case is also a bit special. So I have this condition called hyperidosis, which is a condition of the nervous system that makes my hands and feet sweat a lot for no reason. And until I was 18, when I had a surgery that cut off my nerve, so that my hands became normal again, but became normal for the first time, I couldn't touch anybody. And this made me stay home playing video games 16 hours a day and masturbating, all <laughs> right, because I couldn't do anything basically. And this made me very resentful and very, frust very frustrated as well. Well, I'm sweating a little bit right now because it's really hot in Tel Aviv, but I don't know if I can necessarily relate to that. And what about when guys come to you and they, and they tell you excuses, you know, oh. how can you, how do you respond well, to that uh, usually? I, um, I like to blast them very, very hard. Okay. Mm -hmm. I, I really like to, to tell them, listen, this is an excuse. And I really like to be harsh on that. Because one thing I learned in my, in my journey is that your mind makes up excuses normally, naturally, because it wants to preserve your self-identity, yeah? We can call it ego, if you will. And that's just what it does. And if you don't break it, if you don't make the person realize this is a trap, he will never do it. It's just too easy to stay where you are. Hmm? And I myself have seen this in myself so much and for so long. So... Um, Excuses I get usually are, are, the kind, are of the kind of, oh, but approaching women, I don't know, it's weird. I am working a lot, 40 hours a week, so I don't have time. I will wait for it because, you know, the right woman is something that happens to you, all these sort of things. Some of them are uh, coming from fear and others come from misconception of how reality works. In both cases, I like to get them and destroy them or, and show them for what they are, excuses. What about when guys come to you and they say, oh, but I just need to change cities. I just need to go yeah. to another city or another country where, you know, I actually like the girls there and they'll actually treat me well. How do you respond to that one? Mm, I don't get it that often. Mm -hmm. uh, I got to say that, well, first off, if you are a man, what's most important for you is to be on your purpose. Okay. And do the first off, do the thing that you're supposed to be doing and that you like to be doing. Okay, if you move to another place and you sacrifice that for women, that's already a mistake, if you will. Okay, that's not going to make you happy. Hmm? Some guys come up with this. Maybe they say, oh, I want to go live in Poland. I want to go live in Ukraine, whatever, because women are better over there. And I'm like, yeah, sure. But if you have to change the place where you live for women, your problem is not the women. Your problem is you. Right? You're going to bring your problems with yourself wherever you go. It doesn't matter. Hmm? And what they say to my clients is that you should always be able to consistently meet women that you like wherever you are. It doesn't matter the situation. Otherwise, you're not really free. Hmm? 
if you have to change your environment, if you have to change where you live because you can't handle something, you're not really free. You are actually depending from the environment around you. And that's never, never, um, how do you say, um, never healthy. Yeah. I partly agree with you. And then you partly kind of trigger me when you say like Poland and Ukraine. Okay. Yeah. And these countries that I personally like, I want to move to, you know, I would be one of your students saying that exact same line. Um, because I've traveled around the world now and I've seen the dating culture and dynamics differ in different mm -hmm. cities. And to some people in their you know, personality and their persona, it might match more and to others, it might match less. So mm -hmm. this is a tough one for me when, when students ask me that, because, um, on one level, I want to, you know, give them that cookie cutter answer that you just told me, which is like, okay, if you're on your purpose and you're doing really well and you've got good habits and you're working really hard, then it doesn't matter. You're going to be able to find a woman in any city that you're in. Um, but for some reason, I don't know whether it's fate or um, also limiting beliefs. It doesn't always <laughs> seem to work like that. But mm. we didn't, uh, I didn't bring you on this podcast to just talk about, you know, the best place yeah. to, yeah. Uh, to meet women. Um, yeah. if, you, if you allow I, me, I would, I would like to say just one more thing on that. Absolutely. Then the, differ the difference between moving to another country to find a woman because that's the thing you really want to do and doing it because you have no other option is consciousness. All right? You got to be aware of why you want to do that. Do you want to do that because you are running away from where you live because you're not able to deal with what you have there? Okay? Or are you going there because you feel a genuine love for the place? You feel a genuine um, you know, thing pulling you toward that country. This is two different things. I've been to Poland as well, okay, twice actually, and I enjoyed it a lot. And it's a very nice country. Honestly, I would never go live there, even if the women are amazing, though, because that's not where my purpose is. Hmm? There was something that you said though about the genuine, the genuine interest in the place. Yep. And for me, just my personality. You know, I, I like working with other like digital nomads, people that like to travel around, entrepreneurs like that. And when I can get to a new city, something about my, um, my mindset changes and my actions change. I start to open up more. I get to be more interested in the place. I feel people are more interested in me. Um, and then there's this like this flow, this energy state that is, um, it's creating what seems like a fairy tale. Now, sometimes mm -hmm. that fairy dust, it fades a bit, okay? But there are certain places where I feel like we connect more with mm -hmm. the city or you know, with the people or with the culture. And there are other places where we feel like we're an alien, like we're on another planet. Um, mm -hmm. Anyways, let's move on for a quick second. I do wanna ask you though, since your city was the birthplace of um, like seduction in, in Greece uh, and in, in Italy, I'm sorry. One of the many, one of the many. The yeah. Most yeah. And Italy, it's a lot, a lot of history there. <laughs> um, so how do you think that the seduction community has changed over the years? And can you give mm. us your assessment of the pickup yeah. and seduction community in 2020? Yeah, 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 sure. So my uh, reference for my city was that in the 1980s, and in the 1980s, there wasn't really pickup, there wasn't really, you know, um, engineering what to say to women and stuff. Everybody was a natural. It was all about developing, being natural with women, which is also what I teach now. Hmm? And in 2020, um, well, this is a bit of an oversimplification because it's more nuanced than this, but I see community to be split in two. You have the technical guys and you have the natural guys, okay? And they don't really talk to each other. They don't really understand each other because they, you know, it's like in politics, right? You have the far right and you have the far left and they, they never find a place where they can encounter. Uh, and you see this, this polarization doesn't really help anybody. Hmm? Mm -hmm. That's because when you get yourself entrenched in your position, because it's your position and you identify with it and you defend it, uh, at the cost of your life, you're not really getting the value you want to get. You become, again, a slave. You become dependent on what you think, on your identity. 
uh, what I'm seeing is that, especially in recent years, I, I haven't been in the community for very long, just for three years, something like this. But what I've seen and I really enjoyed, I really liked, is the rise of many pickup companies or many, let's say, better seduction companies that. How about just dating companies? <laughs> Excuse me? Dating How about companies, just yeah. dating companies? Yeah. Dating, yeah, sorry, I was uh, missing the right word. That's exactly what I wanted to say, actually. Um, bringing, it, bringing the attention of, of, of people over their blockages and the repression of the sexuality they have. Here's the thing. If you try to imitate what naturals do, what guys who are naturally good do, without feeling the feeling that they feel, you're not going to get the result that they get doesn't matter how good of an actor you are. Yeah, you're still acting. Hmm? So companies like Social Prime, for example, where I did a bootcamp, or other of my mentors like Thomas Wigan, for example, who is the person thanks to which we, we just met, are instead pushing the idea that all the resources you need, not only for women, but for everything in life, are already within you. Yeah? And so your attention, instead of going outside and looking, for outside, looking outside for the solution, you turn it inward. And that's exactly where you get a turn if you really want to find proper answers. Do you think that there's this trend that you see where guys are getting into the dating world from a seduction standpoint? Like I'm, I myself can attest to that. And then mm -hmm. at a certain point, they maybe outgrow it. Like yeah. they start to see the negative sides and it doesn't make sense for them anymore. And it doesn't, um, it kind of confuses them why they're not getting the kind of res consistent results or why they aren't succeeding with women um, after putting in so much money and time and effort into this process of fixing this area of their life. And they're still kind of running in circles. So mm -hmm. they kind of make that transition from the seduction to healthy dating. Yeah. Have you seen that? Yeah, I can see that. Another very interesting uh, um, phenomenon to observe is even guys who get a lot of results, if you will, who sleep with a lot of women and have all these sort of, uh, you know, open relationships and things, uh, they tend to be still quite unhappy, still depressed, you know. Even the, uh, the, the old teachers like Mystery or Neil Strauss or all these uh, old guys, even if they would get results, they were all badly depressed. And no amount of women will ever help you. If, again, the hole is inside you, if the void is within you and you don't feel it from within, you can never compensate it from without. You know, it's the same thing as addiction. You can get addicted to cocaine. You can also get addicted to sex with new women, for example. And that's still not a solution. Guys instead who are getting stuck and are not getting the results that they want. Well, um, more often than not, the reason is that they don't question themselves long enough. Like, why do you want a certain kind of result? What are you looking for exactly? Yeah. And this is not to say that it is wrong to date many women and get to know as many as possible. Look at the place from where you're coming from. Is it healthy? Do you want to do it because you're moved by the genuine desire to explore and get to know yourself in the journey? Or do you want to increase your lay count and show your friends that you have a higher lay count? Yeah. Again, you need to bring awareness over that. You, need, you really need to get clear with yourself about it. And this is actually the same thing with, do you want to move to Poland because you genuinely want to go live there because you vibe with the city, with Warsaw and whatever, or do you want to get there to increase your lay count? Yeah. Well, let's take this from a different angle. Now, mm -hmm. I know you've talked about this, um, I think in one of your videos, and I was talking to this, um, to this girl the other day and she was basically saying to me that people never change it's impossible mm -hmm. and personally i know that not to be true because 10 years ago i was depressed broken yeah. completely lost you know fucked up with my life parents were going mm -hmm. through divorce all right i dropped out of school and here i am today you know i've got some companies that i've started and you know a podcast and i've had some beautiful relationships and my life looks really different than it did 10 years ago. So, well, what is the process of change and is it possible? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Well, we, we can go very, very deep on this, that feeling I'm getting. So the, um, the thing is this, you, you change 
as part of the evolutionary process you go through. Like this is how life works. This is one of the, the things I actually like to, do, to, to say. I see life as a video game, right? And this is true for humans, but this is also true for animals, right? Like you have a certain environment, you have certain challenges and the bacteria or the animal that can evolve and outgrow the environment will survive and the other will die, yeah? You as a human, you're actually presented with the same sort of challenges and the same sort of opportunities to evolve, all right? The way in which you evolve is by letting go your attachments to who you think you are and embrace who instead you need to be to live a better life. What grows is the identity, let's say. So for example, the Dave Goldstein that was alive 10 years ago is not the same as alive today, all right? Your identity grew to embrace more things, right? More money, better relationships, more success, better people in your life, so on and so forth. That's one thing that changes. One more thing that is actually very, very important to take care of though, is inside each one of us, there is something or someone, if you will, that actually has never changed since we were born. Hmm? And this thing that has never changed is he who is aware of David, he who is aware of Sergio, the observer, Hmm? the awareness behind everything else. And this is why I keep saying awareness is so important because see this way, uh, when you are deeply identified with something, when you say I am Sergio and Sergio is the Italian guy who is a dating coach and does this and that in his life, um, I'm basically rejecting parts of life. I'm rejecting everything that is not like that. Yeah, or all the other possibilities. Hmm? And this is the problem with attachment. When instead I realize that I am not Sergio, I am not that guy from Italy, yada, yada, yada. I am he who is aware of Sergio. Well, it's the difference between, um, you see, seeing myself as the identity or as he who is enjoying that identity. And that makes a massive difference because it makes you very, very flexible. Yes. This flexibility, this ability to let go of the attachments is what makes the difference between the people who can change and evolve continuously and those who remain stuck for the whole life, which are the ones that the girl was referring to in the conversation you had. So let's say you hate meditation, okay? Mm -hmm. You're yeah. not in touch with your spiritual side, all right? Mm -hmm. You've had a lot of bad experiences in the past. Maybe you've been through trauma, um, your relationships didn't work out the way that you thought, um, mm -hmm. and now you're stuck in this position where you're kind of bitter and, mm -hmm you know, not feeling so great about actually the process of change. Well, what's the first step towards um, a healthy set of awareness, which will, you know, kickstart that journey? Well, the first thing and the last thing is surrender. Mm -hmm. Surrender is one of the deepest concepts you actually can have, okay? At the lowest level, like the first time you need it, is to accept the fact that as you are, your situation as it is, is not the best for you. You don't like it. You have to be objective enough to look at your life and say, okay, I am resentful. I have all this bullshit going on in my head. I'm not working the job I would like to work. I don't have the relationship I would like to have. Is this true? Yes or no? You have to admit yourself the truth. All right? To grow even spiritually, you don't need to meditate. Not necessarily. It helps a lot. And I encourage everybody to do it. But the first thing you got to do is to admit the truth and surrender to the fact that that is the truth, all right? As soon as you admit to yourself and others that that's your situation and you don't actually like it, that's when you can actually change. And you will see um, it's gonna be subtle. The change is gonna be subtle at the beginning, but you will naturally be driven to change little things first and then bigger things, yes? Instead, what happens is that people get attached to the situation they're in, to the emotions they feel. And so let's say I am resentful I have a hidden pleasure in being resentful. I have a hidden pleasure in talking shit about people. I have a hidden pleasure in thinking that others are worse than me and that they deserve to, to fail. Yeah. In the moment in which I admit that that's bullshit, okay, that I am literally bullshitting myself not to be, uh, in order not to put the effort that I should be putting, then naturally I will start putting that effort because I'm like, okay, that was shit, I was fooling myself. Now it's time to actually do the thing I would like to do. And this is gradual, but you are also going to see massive changes as you, embrace, as you embrace this process. All right, I'm going to throw you a curveball. So is there anything 
right now in your life that you mm -hmm. think that you could maybe take it up a level by surrendering and becoming more aware and admitting yes. of what you're struggling with? 100%, 100%. So number, well, um, I'm actually doing it already, but number one, I got to surrender to be even more loving and even more welcoming to the people I work with. Mm -hmm. I already consider myself quite successful with the amount and quality of clients I have in my life, and I'm super grateful for them. Um, there, there are still parts of the work that I don't want to do. For example, oh, let's say today I have to shoot a video, or I have to write an article. I don't want to. Nobody's going to read it. Nobody's going to watch it. Why should I do it in the first place? People don't understand what I talk about anyway. There is no point in doing it. <laughs> okay, That's actually an excuse. That's actually a massive excuse not to, uh, not to give my love. That's it. Yes? Because in the moment in which you give love, in the moment in which you open yourself up, you expose yourself. You also expose yourself to be hard. That's deep down what you don't want to do. All right? Even the resentful person, resentment is basically a defense mechanism not to get pain in your life. Yeah? But instead of having a short outburst of pain and then a massive amount of love and enjoyment you get after, with resentment, you die a little bit every day. Yes? With the laziness I have, also I'm kind of dying a little bit every day. Like every single day I don't live my full potential. I haven't lived fully. Yeah? And this is not a way to, be, to, to beat myself down. Right? Oh, fuck, let me flail myself because today I didn't live fully, right? It's more like, oh, fuck, okay, my life is amazing, but... I can expand even more. I can grow even more. And that's, that's amazing. Yeah. It's, it's good to be aware of it. Yeah. Not a way to feel, not as a way to feel guilty, but to feel motivated. Let's say, uh, another thing I would, uh, definitely, definitely like to have, um, more women in my life in the moment uh, in my life, I encounter myself with, I, um, well, I have been in a great, uh, in a great report, um, with a girl I, I met a few months ago. Now she moved to another city. I'm not going to see her anymore. So, and I only had, uh, how do you say them, casual encounters so far. I am definitely looking for things that are more serious at the moment. I'm also a bit lazy with that as well. Also because in my head I say, yeah, no, I got to focus on the business as well. I got to do this, I got to do that. Um, I can definitely put my love out much more, even with that regard, especially because I know I'm good. Like I know I can get it. You know, I just have to move my ass, my ass out of the house and go get it. That's the thing. Yeah, well, you're keeping to your word and you're not chasing after the, you know, the woman and going to her city just because she left you. Your purpose, obviously, is in Italy right now. Um, yeah. And what's the situation right now with um, Corona, where you are in your city? Well, um, you got to say my city was one of the worst hit once in the mm. entire national uh, territory okay but now it's actually going quite well like the parties are back uh there are the, the clubs are open and no way. we match yeah man it's uh it's actually quite irresponsible from a certain point of view. <laughs> i can imagine it's very very irresponsible i actually went to a club three weeks ago or even one month ago something like this and there were like i don't know four thousand people <laughs> <What? laughs> stuck you know like cattle and uh, that's Definitely not something that should be happening, but it is, all right? So it's plenty of people going out. Huh? I don't know if this is going to get worse with time. Probably it is, but it's, uh, the situation is basically normal nowadays. No making out until the second date, all right, Sergio? Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> no way. <laughs> you never, I actually, I go with the, you know the gun that tells you if you have the fever? That's what they carry oh, yeah? in my, my coffee. Yeah, yeah, and I check out the girl if she has the fever. Mm. Otherwise, I don't listen. That's a good qualification right there. That's always, yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> you were talking um, about loving your students mm -hmm. a little bit more than you currently do. And I guess that takes us into how did you stumble upon Thomas Wiggum? Huh. He was my first coach ever. And... Uh, it's super, um, this is actually something very touching for me. It was going like this. There was this girl I really, really liked in Barcelona in, my, in the first year when I started game, okay? And uh, in my head, I was like, okay, if I can get her, fuck pickup, fuck seduction, and no, I don't care, um, I will just be with her. If I don't, 
Then I will go to the Sopot Summit 2018, I think it was, or 17, can't remember that. And if I go there, I want to go there full potency and also do the bootcamp. Thomas was doing a bootcamp in that city. And uh, yeah, there was a summit, you know, for those of you who don't know, a summit is a, is a moment in which um, the most prominent men from the community show where their work is and what they do and what is their take on seduction and attraction and everything else and women, yeah? And Thomas was organizing a bootcamp there. And I was like, okay, uh, I want to do it because I didn't get together with the girl I wanted. Uh, and that was actually a blessing because then I met Thomas and he blew my mind from the first time I met him. Okay. He was uh, quite different from how he is now. Um, he was very, um, what's the right word? Was he more mainstream? Was he less spiritual? No. <laughs> he was, he was <laughs> not mainstream at all. I no? would say he was, he was batshit crazy. But, okay. Uh, okay. Just in a different way from how he is now. <laughs> it's, it's, uh, it's very, very interesting. But that was important because it really shattered my reality. Was you he know, still talking about self-love when you first met him? That was the first thing he told me about. Okay. No, actually, actually, if I can reveal this, the first thing he had me do was to slap the ass of his girlfriend. Oh my God. Yes, to connect with my masculine side. I'm going to yes. have to put plus 18 on this podcast. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. You definitely should, but hey, this is what happens on a live bootcamp with Thomas Bigham. Okay, so... <laughs> This is what happened to me, at least. And are you doing mostly um, online coaching or also live yeah. programs as well? No, I, uh, I did the very, very small live coaching when I'm beginning, when I start. But then I realized that online is better. Uh, also, with the regards with what you said, with the changing the city, right? Uh, online allows you to follow a client for a longer amount of time and follow him in his environment. Yes. And when I can follow you in the city where you are, which can be, I don't know, a small village in Switzerland, or it can be Luxembourg, yeah? Uh, you are forced to learn how to approach women and develop relationships on your own in that city, yeah? It's fairly easy to go to Warsaw, okay? Have a live bootcamp with the, with, the, with the instructor by your side, motivating you and pushing you, yeah? But after one week or two weeks or one month, you will forget to be part of that. And when you're home alone, you don't have that motivation anymore. Yeah. What's important is that you learn how to work without the motivation. And that's why it's so important to have me in your ear. Yeah. Telling you, motherfucker, move your ass. You are approach today. Yeah. Do you ever meet guys and you think that if they were to go out and try to meet women in a natural setting, that it would be mm -hmm. doing more harm than good and they're just not ready for it? No. No, you're always ready for it, uh, provided that you have the right tools to do it. So, okay, let's say, let's, let's be a bit more precise here. Mm -hmm. um, whatever emotion you're feeling, whatever your point, um, your identity is, whatever thing you will do will confirm that identity. So if inside you, you believe that women are bitches and they abuse men all the time and they are high pergamos and whatever, if you go out and you get to meet women, chances are you will keep confirming these beliefs you have already. Hmm? So what is very, very important is that first off, you open up yourself to learn new things and change your identity as you meet reality, as you see what's real actually out there. This is what's important. And then if you go out with an open mind, you will actually see that women are not all the same. And many of the things you believe to be true are actually not true. But in order to see this, first, you got to do the work on yourself that allows you to say, I don't know everything. Just because I feel this emotion within me, it doesn't mean it's true. Hmm? So that's the thing that really makes the difference between doing harm or doing good. So Thomas was your first coach. Yes. You struggled with women, even though you, you know, are an average looking guy <laughs> and, uh, you know, quite intelligent. What was the big change where you started taking action? Did you read a book? Did you follow someone on the internet? Uh, what happened? How did, how did you make this huge change in your life uh -huh. the last three years? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it was... Okay, so I did my bachelor degree in, uh, in Milan and I had a relationship when I was there. And I enjoyed it. I liked her. We liked each other. We went out a lot and we went on trips and concerts and things like this. You know, the usual things you do in a relationship. But 
there wasn't really a fire burning over there. Yeah. As soon as I realized it, um, I broke up with her. And then I went to Mykonos with my best friend. And mm. I didn't even kiss the girl in Mykonos. And I was like, holy fucking shit. Why, why is it like this? Why am I such, so incompetent? Yeah. In this field? Yeah. Then I go study in Barcelona. And um, the situation is still the same. Even if it's plenty of girls around, even if I am good looking and intelligent and everything else you say, I have all these good qualities, I still don't know what to do with them. All right? And that's very, very frustrating. Very fucking frustrating. Absolutely. Truth is, there was a girl I was particularly interested in. Okay? And, uh, but I also had zero clue on what to do together. It was interesting because with her, I, well, at a certain point I found about game and ooh, check it out. This is super interesting. The first book I ever read is Models by Mark Manson. And that's all about honesty and vulnerability and shit. Mm -hmm. And um, that's actually the first book I try out. But then I go on a reading rampage and I read all the be the pickup book or the you know what i'm talking about like you consume all the content you download all the courses and you, you do yeah, this pick up book. junkie is what we call them yeah 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 that thing and so i read all these books like mystery method the game all the other stuff and i start applying them too yeah I, i'm just trying what works and what doesn't because i didn't have proper guidance okay mm -hmm. um it turns out that the best thing i should have done with there would have been to be open and vulnerable which i didn't do because I was still stuck in the old pickup shit. Mm? And losing her was so fucking painful that it really made me do a shift. What's super interesting, by the way, is that shortly after um, I lost this girl, I met Niels Flair and the rest of the social crime crew in Barcelona. And that's the first time I met them. And then they were organizing the, the Sopot Summit, which is where I met Thomas. And all their teachings, I also did a bootcamp with them, are all about opening up and being vulnerable and embracing who you actually are with all your defects, all your insecurities, all the bullshit you think about, all your silly attachments, you know, all these childish behaviors you can have. And in the moment in which you are open about them, you embrace them for what they are, they become a strength actually, because you go like, okay, hey, this is the truth. There is nothing to justify, nothing to explain. This is how things are. And it can get quite difficult. It happened to me many times to cry my eyes out in front of a girl. Uh, on my first day with the social crime immersion, I cried in the dance floor in Teatro Cubano in Warsaw. Okay, that was very, very interesting. I know the I, Teatro Cubano. All right. I guess you know it very well. You can name well. drop yeah. if you want. Go for it. Okay. <laughs> well, I, I've been to Teatro Cubano like 12 times in 15 days. <laughs> That's how intense I was going. This. Yeah. And that we're, we're going to cut that part out. Okay. <laughs> okay. Okay. And the main, the main switch ahead was, okay, be vulnerable, open up the heart. Yeah, that's, that's it. This is really misunderstood concept um, mm -hmm. in dating and in life in general. Okay, because I even see now some of like the, the guys in the seduction community will try to like sprinkle that in to what they coach mm -hmm. just so they can say that they're saying what the mm -hmm. other guys are saying. Okay. Even though they don't really necessarily mean it, or even though they say like, yeah, you can be like a little bit vulnerable, but not too much or else she's yeah. going to look at you as like a beta male. Okay. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, yeah, yeah. My process is interesting because I think subconsciously I realized that like the reason why I was connecting with women, okay, and with other people was because I was showing my vulnerability. Um, but even sometimes when you do that and like maybe the tears start coming to your eyes as you're opening up to the girl, okay, or you have that like really deep connection, you start to feel like, oh shit, she's gonna look yeah. at me as like so gay like super beta like oh this is so bad don't do this you know david hold yourself together uh, don't be emotional and a part of that is from the society and a lot of the coaches and the books that we've read which have conditioned us to be you know closed off to our emotions mm -hmm. yes so, so this thing yeah. this thing you talk about i'm very very familiar with it it's normal for it to happen actually and 
when I was with this girl I mentioned you, this is exactly the mistake I did. You know, I was in the moment in which I was about to open up, but then I was like, no, wait a second, I can't be a beta male, otherwise I lose her. Guess what happened? I lost her. Here's how it works. Your mind, your ego, has a thing called the false power. It makes you think that by acting, by pretending, and by forcing things, by manipulating, you will get what you really want to get. Hmm? It holds true because if you look at it logically, right, you have to, if you manipulate and you are strategic about things, eventually you kind of get things, yes? But if you really go look at it, you're never satisfied. You are never fulfilled by what you get. And you get a very small portion of benefits with a very large effort put up front. Instead, the true power you have as a human, and if you will, your divine power as a human, is to be vulnerable, allow things to come to you, be open to things. And when, what happens when you do this is you get massive results with relatively low effort. It, it's such a mind-blowing thing, it's difficult to accept it, okay? The mind tries all the time to cover you from this. Because in the moment in which you find out that just by being open and asking for what you want and saying things for what they are gets you more than you can ask for, then the ego has to die. Then the ego has to dissolve. Okay? And the ego is not evil. The ego is there for a reason. Okay? It's, it's fulfilling a very important role. But let's say it's, um, it's very stubborn. Yes? It's very stubborn and doesn't want you to evolve. It doesn't want you to get out of the trap. Yeah? Uh, and that's why, for example, what happens is, and every, see it this way, the beta male thing and all the conditioning are all very welcome excuses that the ego takes, you know, as tools to keep you where you are. Whatever thing you encounter in your life, whatever interpretation you give to things, the ego will appropriate of that and use it in its own favor. Okay? When you feel the heart opening up, when you feel like being vulnerable with people and then the tears come down, that's literally the ego doing its job to protect you. And that's what the ego does. The ego is meant to help you survive, okay? The misunderstanding is that if you open up yourself and you become vulnerable, then you're gonna be hard. But that's actually a lie. If you open yourself up and you're allowed to be hit, you will find out actually you cannot be hard, actually. Especially if you learn how to love the pain you can feel. Yeah, and you will see that you are expecting to be hard this much and feel this much love, but it's the other way around. You're going to feel this much pain and this much love. The point in which you're going to forget about pain. Yeah? But the ego tells you that the proportion are inverted, so it's not worth it to let things out. This is the trick that it plays. We're getting really deep into the psychology behind attraction right now. So yeah. I hope you guys are taking notes. Yeah, um, we I, are gonna... I would say that this is actually beyond psychology, if you if you allow me <laughs> to quote Osho. <laughs> we are gonna yeah. finish. We are gonna finish off soon, so <clears throat> I'm yes. just gonna ask you a few more questions before we come to the end of this uh, really fascinating interview. So, let's say uh, you've met someone, and you think that you're attracted to them, okay, but you're not really sure whether you guys are compatible, mm -hmm. okay? So how do you figure that out? What is you know, your ideal companion and whether you're compatible with your partner? Mm -hmm. Okay, uh, well, compatibility is difficult to pinpoint intellectually. It's something you first feel. You feel you can be yourself without restraints. Yeah, and she can be the same with you. When you observe this, when you feel this, you know there is compatibility. Hmm? Intellectually, I can tell you that I tend to be more compatible with women who are very intelligent, very open-minded, and who are willing to grow. Hmm? Who are okay, willing so to... We've got a balance here between the yeah. things that you're interested in in a woman, but also hmm. being able to be open and honest with her about your feelings and your past and your present and your emotions? Mm, not exactly like that. Like I'm always open about my feelings, my past and my emotions. Well, number one, I, gotta, I want a woman and I'm compatible with women who can take that because not everybody can take that. Hmm? And you notice that like when I, when I, there are women with whom if I open up, they just run, they literally run away. 
they just get closed because having somebody who opens up in front of you is very confrontating. It forces you to see the things is letting out within yourself. Yeah. So if I'm afraid of rejection and I tell you, you have fear and rejection within you as well. And I'm, I'm taking it up. I'm putting it here for also you to look at. Yes. Are you able to accept the fear you have within you as well? If you aren't, we can't be together because I'm going to keep coming out. I'm going to keep letting out shit from myself all the time. If <laughs> you can't handle it, you, you can't be with me. All right. That's one thing. Um, but the connection, yeah, the compatibility, I feel it's something that is literally like beyond the categories. It's beyond the he, she has this quality and this quality and this quality. Um, it's a sort of flow that you can feel. And uh, you, can, um, you can increase the amount of girls with whom you can have this flow if you really open up, but you can't have it with everybody. That's what they feel at the moment. And it, it's as if it, like, it's something that is there already, you just need to uncover it. You cannot create it. And this is also the mistake many people do in their relationships. They just get together because they kind of like each other. Yeah. And they, they pretend to build this relationship. They, they, they mm. think, oh yeah, I'm building something with someone now. I'm building this thing. No, you, you can't build. You can't build this connection. Either it's there or it isn't. Yeah. If it's there already, you can nurture it, but you can't make it up out of thin air. I like that point about building something that's not really there. Yeah. And then what happens? It ends in, you know, sadness, breakup, divorce, divorce things yes, like that. Yes. 100%. So we're going to jump through. We got two questions from my students and then we've got the final question that I ask all my guests. Yes. So one of my students um, is stuck on how to know when, whether, um, how to tell if a woman wants him to lead or to escalate. Mm. So Again, it's much like the connection. It's a feeling you can get. Hmm? Um, what if someone is not necessarily aware of that feeling and, and yeah. just kind of new in the yeah, dating and world? And, and, you know, they, they're already a little bit scared of women. So yeah. they go on that date. It's like already a success. And mm -hmm. then, you know, they would like it to lead someplace else, but mm -hmm. they just can't really pick up on the uh, subcommunication. The cues. Yet. Yes. Yeah. Okay then the, the best thing you can do is to be overt with your communication and say, okay, listen, now I feel like I want to bring you here, but I'm afraid this might not be the right moment or that I might ruin the atmosphere we have. Hmm? In the beginning, when your awareness is not developed, the best thing you can do is to say that, you know, it, 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 you say the truth again. You say, okay, listen, I feel like I might do the wrong thing, but that's what I want to do. Yeah. And this is like training wheels and um, props to Chris Wilde and the social crime crew for designing this tool, which helped me a lot, by the way, they call it. Chris Wilde's getting a lot of yeah. <laughs> shout outs on know. this interview right now. <laughs> yeah, 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 absolutely. Hey, Chris. And, and, he, and he deserves that. He deserves okay. that. Yeah. Basically the, the approach you want to take, whatever your sticking point is, is to tell the truth whenever you can. By telling the truth, the whole of it, you will find what is true and what is not. And the more you find what is true, the easier it's going to be to follow it. Because let's say you're horny, you want to go home and you have no blockages around it. You know, okay, this is the true thing to do. That's what I'm going to do. No problem with doing it because it's the truth. Yeah. All right. Second to last question. Yeah. Um, we were going to discuss this before, but then I realized you had kind of an interesting story. So let's drop it now. Um, mm -hmm. I know that you're, you know, not so experienced with it, but uh, what do you think about open relationships? And what is your past experience? Well, my past experience is that, um, so I, I honestly never had an open relationship of the sort of, okay, we're gonna be together for several years. We're gonna build something, but we're also gonna be open. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I had several relationships in which um, I was open in a sense that I was meeting other girls, all right? Uh, and, and Sometimes she, she was meeting other guys as well. Um, what's very, very important when you have this sort of relationship, in fact, is again, that you are brutally honest from the beginning and that you, you say, okay, listen, that's what I want. That's how I am. That's what I'm doing in this moment of my life. And if it's not good for you, if this is not what you want, I'm, I'm ready to lose you. Hmm? That's the attitude you got to come from. That can be really hard for a lot of guys to handle that. 
it's hard for the guys to handle that because they um, they have a lot of conditioning around it. And again, there is a lot of insecurities around the thing, but you got to yeah. express the insecurities as well. That's they also something. might be in, in scarcity yeah. right now and they don't have a lot of women and you know, they think, all right, I want an open relationship, but even if I just yeah. get one, that'll be enough. Yeah. So then listen, if you have, this is actually interesting because I had a guy in a, in a, in a sales call two days ago yeah. and he said, okay, I said, listen, I want an open relationship. That's exactly what he said. I want an open relationship. I'm like, oh, okay. So how many dates have you had in the last month? Zero. In the last six months? Zero. What, what were you doing before? Oh, I had this relationship in which I was going back and forth with the girl and it wasn't really going good. And I'm like, okay, listen, dude, an open relationship is somewhat an advanced thing to have, if you will. Absolutely. Before you have that, you got to be able to get women in your life and go on many dates and meet many girls. Otherwise, how do you expect yourself to be able to handle that? Okay. Um, everything comes from within. If within you, you don't have the confidence, you don't have the, the security that is needed, okay, to have this sort of open relationship, then start smaller, start dating first, okay, start meeting different girls, start with something more casual, then maybe, I don't know, have a normal relationship then see what, you, what else you can do. There is actually a lot of things to say, yeah? But uh, see it this way. When you say you have an open relationship with someone, either you don't care that much about them or you care about them, but you also want to be free. If you are open, she is probably going to open, be open as well. And what are you going to do when she's going to fuck another guy? Can you handle that? Can you be okay with that, Philip? That is the always that is always the question that people jump yeah. on. If, is if like, you can know. all right, if you want to be in an open relationship, how are you going to feel when your partner yeah. is sleeping with someone else? And yeah. most people are going to be like, I don't know about yeah. that. <laughs> you cannot give what you can take. Yeah, yeah, and, and vice versa. All right. So it actually happened to me to be um, to be with a girl, and then she fucked another guy, and it kind of bothered me, but. I took it as an occasion to let go of my attachment. And actually we are still in a very, in very good rapport, me and her, all right? So see it also this way, you, you can be beforehand a bit scared and unsure about yourself. My suggestion would be, okay, if that's the thing you really want, go for it, see what happens and everything that happens, take it as an opportunity to look inward and to let go of your attachments, let go of your fears. All right. So it will happen. It will happen that she's going to fuck somebody else. All right. It will also happen that you're going to fuck someone else and she's going to tell you she doesn't like it. She doesn't want it anymore. All right. A lot of stuff is going to happen. See, use it as an, an opportunity to dive in in your emotions and let them flow out. Yeah. And tell the truth and see what is actually true and what isn't. My final question to you, Sergio, that I last, mm -hmm. that I ask all my guests and we can take it one at a time. How do you want to evolve first your dating life, but also your business life in the next year? Hmm. In this moment of my life where my business is growing, I'm, I'm planning to move a lot around the world, you know, and visit friends around. And many of my friends are also dating coaches and we are all very adventurous people. Okay. So what I want to do, uh, what I will, what they want, yes, is to have, um, Several partners, yes, maybe in different parts of the world that I can, I can catch up with, that I can uh, have deep relationship with, uh, but without too much of a burden on myself, because I actually don't know where I will live one year from now, yes? And also with the pandemic and all the other shit that's happening, I, I really have zero idea. I can move pretty much wherever. I don't know yet where it's going to be. So it wouldn't make sense for me to establish something serious at the moment because I don't even want to sustain it. It's not the right moment of my life. And this is also what I, what I sell yeah, as a dating coach is to find the right woman. The right woman means the right woman for the moment of your life where you're in. Many people look for the monogamous relationship all the time, or maybe some of your clients look for the open relationship and only that. Listen, you don't actually know what you want. You don't actually know what's right for you until you see it. You got to be open to receive that. Yes. So if, if I find out that actually a monogamous relationship is the thing that I want, the thing that I need, the thing that I find, then I will be open to get that. If it's not, I'll be open to get what other thing is there. Okay. Um, so yeah, always be open. <laughs> always be open. That's the thing. Amazing. Well, it's been very interesting having you on, meeting you, getting to know you. 
how can the uh, listeners connect with you on social media? Yeah, I'm on Facebook, Sergio Cantore. Okay, I know in the English spelling it's Cantor E because the E is written that way. Okay, in Italian it's Cantore. Um, you can find me on Facebook. That's the easiest way to find me. I work on LinkedIn a lot as well. Again, Sergio Cantore. Um, on Instagram, I have the same name, Sergio Cantore. So um, it's going to be fairly, fairly easy. If you, um, if you belong to any of the groups of the coaches that I, that I mentioned, Social Prime and Thomas Wiggum's Self Love Army, uh, you're going to find me there as well. Sometimes I write, sometimes I comment over there. I tend to be quite active on those forums. And yeah, that's it. That's how you can find me. Beautiful. So they'll overlook your, you know, a little Italian accent. They're going to reach out to you because you obviously have a lot, a lot to offer and you're just, you know, loving your students more and more each day. So, and also to the listeners, if you're looking to evolve your business and dating life, just head over to davegoldevolve.com. Check out my site. And if you're ready for a massive change, book an evolve session. I'm offering the first one for free for a limited time. So this has been an amazing interview. Um, you know, we were able to discover and discuss a lot of different topics um, from finding the right partner, opening up, and being vulnerable with women, um, and really determining which kind of relationship is right for you and having the flexibility to see it when it comes up and be aware of it. So I hope you guys enjoyed this episode. Um, feel free to like, share, and comment what you learned. And I'll see you guys in the next episode. Peace. See you.